and he has come to us from Washington, D.C., Dr. Suleiman Nayang, and he's professor of African and Islamic studies at the Harvard University. And he's so humble that when I asked him his biodata, he said, this is enough. So, but I think you attend all ISNA conferences and other Islamic conferences, and he's a very popular speaker. And he's going to talk to us about the sub of Islamic spirituality and the problems of the modern world. Uh, brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, it's with great pleasure that I visit Chicago again. I have been here several times, but this is my first visit to this uh, Milat, and I'm happy and grateful to be invited here because I think it is very important for us to reflect on the life of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and the deeds of the Prophet and the relevance of his example to modern human beings. The topic I am addressing uh, will take a little of your time and I hope that with Allah's guidance by the time I finish uh, we will all uh, be uh, benefited by the presentation. First of all, uh, when we talk about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, what we have to recognize is that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came to this world over 1400 years ago. And this means to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has maintained the honor he bestowed upon him and this is very well stated in the Quran al-Kareem inna allaha wa malaykatuhu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu alazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallam at taslima I think that very well is very clear in the Quran and of course the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been given many honors by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you recognize the fact that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is the only human being who has been in this planet and when he left, his successors did not turn against him, his Sahabas. Abu Bakr, may Allah uh, bless him, anhu, and Sayyidina Omar, and Sayyidina Ali, and Sayyidina Usman, they all followed the example of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and all of us are now expected to follow that example. The honor, if you look at most of the world leaders, the moment their successor uh, 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 takes power, he automatically turns against them. There was a big joke in Egypt when Sadat took over from NASA. He came to the intersection of his limousine and the driver turns around and say, Ya Rais, when NASA was here, uh, he used to tell me to put the signal to the left. So Sadat took a dip in his pipe he used to smoke pipe, he told him, put the signal to the left, but turn right. That tells you a lot about fidelity of politicians. But in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, among human beings, Sayyidina Omar, I mean Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Omar, Sayyidina Ali, they remain faithful. And when Abu Bakr took over, he made it very clear that if he deviates one iota from the Prophet, let them rebuke him. We don't get that from leaders nowadays. This becomes very important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that he would restore the dignity of the Prophet beyond the grave and that human beings will continue to remember him and his message will resonate throughout human history until Yom al -Hiyama. And of course, the great honor is every day millions of Muslims around the world are saying, Allahumma siri ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama salaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahima wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahima inna ka hamidun majid Allahumma baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad inna ka hamidun majid Millions of people are saying it almost every second. That's the greatest dignity and honor you can get as a human being. And we have to say that. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now, it is against this background that we can look at tasawwuf and the manner in which tasawwuf is relevant to human beings today in the human society. I am very much aware of the fact that 
there is controversy in our community with regard to the whole idea of the self in some quarters among Muslims. But one thing that needs to be emphasized here while we are looking at the relevance of the self in modern society is the fact that modern human beings today face a number of problems which were faced by human beings previously. But the difference between modern human beings today and creatures who live at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the fact that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us akhil, intelligence, and we have been able to use that intelligence to change the material world we live in. When we read the Quran, we see the story of Sayyidina Yunus, who was in the whale. And of course, at that particular time, when human beings think about Sayyidina Yunus and the whale, it was a big mystery. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings the brain power to the point that now they can create submarines and human beings can go deep down in the water and experience what Sayyidina Yunus experienced in a miraculous way. Not in a man-made machine, but in the fish. And this becomes a very important point for us to bear in mind. You read in Surah Al-Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that the birds in the air are able to remain there because of his rahmah. And of course today Allah has given us akhil to create through the laws of aerodynamics to create human beings to fly in the sky. And of course that's the rahmatullah and that is given to the birds and given to us. And of course this, all of this happened after the Prophet Muhammad who came to this world. That is when these secrets were revealed to human beings and we should say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Now it is also against this background that we can now look at the problems of modern human beings today. If you look at modern human beings, especially the most advanced human beings who are now living technologically and scientifically in Western societies, you find that modern human beings, if they are not very careful, they become prisoners of their own concepts, prisoners of their own creation and prisoners of their own natural environment. So if you are not very careful, you find yourself in three prison circles. Conceptual circle, where you become a prisoner of your own conceptual powers. You become prisoner of your own material creation. In Mecca, in the time of the Prophet Wasallam, in Mecca, the Arabs used to take the dates and they will come up with these seats and they say this is Allah for them. They made gods out of things they made with their hand. Modern human beings do not do that, but they become slaves of concepts. And of course, they can create the idols of the tribe, idols.